Now we're going to look at the red pyramid. It's the first true pyramid and it was built out of red limestone. So we're going to walk up to the corner of this and uh, take a look at it. It's all weather beaten. This is a red, red limestone. You could see it. And the same thing. They have a border between them. There's the bent pyramid over there. The black pyramid in the distance. We can just take a walk around this and look. That's it. And look at this. Must be a sign for an alien landing pad. Uh-huh. And we came from there. We walked around this side right here. That's the other side of the pyramid. And then they got a lot of stones laying all over the place here. And we're walking up into this area where I guess some of the original stones are. Now here's some of the original stones from the Red Pyramid. This is the limestone that they, they uh, did it with. And you can see, like I told you, this goes first, this goes first, then butt everything up against it. You can fill it with junk if you want. But that's the casing, then you fill it in. And we're on the front of this pyramid. Right there is the entrance to the Red Pyramid if you wanted to go in. Right up in there. And that's the front of the pyramid. That's the entrance if you want to go in. That's that. Now we're on. Now we're looking at the Red Pyramid. There's the Bend Pyramid. You go over there, that's the Black Pyramid. And you go around here, they got something trucking going on. Way over there in the distance, see if I get it on camera, there's other pyramids in the background. Over there in the distance, there's other pyramids. I'm going to do a little demonstration on facing stone with other stones, just to, just to make my point. Everybody thinks you need all this big technology and old school technology to cut stone, but you don't. This is the, this is the one I did when I did my Ilya Tavo video. I kept beating on it until I got it flat, and it worked. So over here, we have pieces of limestone. Same thing they built the pyramids with. If I wanted to cut a piece off with just a little brick hammer, it's not a big deal. I could take my time and do it any way I want. If I wanted to do it with a piece of granite, same thing, it's not a big deal. Watch. Take it off, turn it over, take it off, not a big deal. If I want to refine it more, I just get my stone and I just keep cutting into it. I can make that as flat as I want. Cutting into limestone like they did the pyramids is no big deal. They're all trying to tell you it's all oh, this, it's that. They made polymenture or I don't know what they call it. Look at, I could get that angle if I want. I could use the other stone and grind it down. Same thing. Now let's use a harder stone. This right here is what we call marble. So let's just say I want to cut into the marble. If I use a brick hammer, no problem. Get in there with the brick hammer. If I want to use a piece of granite as a hammer, same thing. No big deal. If I want to put this down, same thing. See that? I'll get my... I'll get my lines, just the same thing. 
Now, you're saying, oh, copper tools are no good. Or we don't know how they did it with copper tools. Well, here's a piece of copper. And I'm gonna make my point. If you've seen me ever working with Honest Jardy, <laughs> this is a copper pipe. And I gotta do this to prove my point. But everybody thinks it's a big deal, but it's not. That's the copper. So I'm just gonna flatten this out like a chisel. And if we wanted to do, let's say, see this? I did that with a saw. If I just wanna draw a little line in here, no big deal. It works. See that? I could carve letters with that. That's not a big deal. So don't let them be telling you all this stuff that they're telling you about how they made the pyramids. Because it's it's because to me it's dead dumb and stupid. It's simple. You, anybody could do it today like they did it yesterday. I'm going to talk about this video a little bit. That was just a little example of how you could take one stone and carve into another stone. And it goes all the way down to diamond size if you wanted to do it. This is an American arrowhead that we used to walk along the Susquehanna River and find them down there. And this was not made with any iron tools or anything. It was one rock against another rock. They've been doing this for centuries. I did a video on Isla Antambo. And my brother and me did a little demonstration on how you got a piece of granite, beat on another granite, and you could get what you want out of it. So it's not a big deal to cut stone with another stone. I was up at the unfinished obelisk at Upper Egypt, and you seen me cutting into the rock with the dolerite. So one heavy stone will cut another stone. When I went to Egypt in 2007, I went into a shop where they're still cutting limestone. Look at the guy with the hammer. This guy is actually making an old school type of bowl. He's just drilling down into it. Limestone is very, very soft. The next scene, you're gonna see a guy with a file. That's a regular modern day file that we would use to file wood. And then he just gets a piece of regular stone, another piece of limestone against stone, and that's how he polishes it. This guy isn't even using any kind of carving tool. He's just carving it with his hand with a harder piece of stone. It's not a big deal to cut stone. And everybody's saying, oh, they took it and they reformed it and they poured it like cement. No, they didn't. They just cut it out of the quarry. And any guy who cuts any stone out of a quarry is going to tell you. It's softer when it first is cut out than if you leave it out in, the, out in the weather for a year. So during my military experience, Vietnam was still going on. I got sent to the Middle East. So I'm out there and I've been through sandstorms and I've been through windstorms. I got bit by camels and I could go on and on and tell you all my stories. But the whole point I'm trying to make in this video is the whole Giza Plateau and all around Cairo is nothing but a cemetery and graveyards. And there was two ways they had to do it. If you're a real rich person, you could build as big a pyramid as you want. If you're a poor person, they put you in the sand and they throw rocks on top of you. What happens after that is the windstorms come through and blows all the sand away and you're looking at a pile of rocks and a, and a body. So what they do is they dig down. That's where the tombs came from. Now I was up in the Valley of the Kings going down in the tombs. That's all that is too. It's nothing but a graveyard. And they're telling you all this stuff. Oh, it was this, it was that. It isn't. It's a graveyard. It's a cemetery. Two ways to do it. Either dig down into the tombs and put the bodies you walk all around the pyramids, anywhere, all the way down to Dashur, and you're going to see the same thing. It's common sense. They didn't bury the bodies in the farmer fields. They took them out in the desert. So it's nothing more than that. It's a, there's no other way to really look at that. So I hope you like these videos. I'm going to keep on going. I think I'm going to go to the museum the next time. I'm going to look at that and back up into the Giza Plateau and uh, go from there. So thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video. What does that say right there, Jeffrey? This says in Egyptian, Honest Mike is having a used car owl sale today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it all the way in Egypt he's advertising? <laughs>